Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. And on tonight, I am playing my bar bar barbarian shaman who is level 3. And as you can see, I'm warming myself over by the fire because I am almost completely naked other than my kilt. So I am freezing out here. You know, you look at his, his chest and you see like these ripples of muscles. It's not actually ripples of muscle. His fat has just frozen into that shape because he's so cold. I need to get him some clothing, but he's so poor he doesn't have any money. And so it's kind of regrettable, but he just has to deal with it. Right now, I am going to come over here and sell some stuff. I do have a little bit of money on him. Uh, not too much. But we have one of these uh, rusty two-handed hammers which sell for close to three gold two gold eight silver two copper that's pretty nice that's a that's a decent amount of money because for about six gold it's a little bit less than that but for about six gold you can buy a backpack so for basically two of these weapons uh, you can get a whole backpack for it which is pretty nice now we did get these uh, Noel pup scalps they don't really sell for very much but they are stackable and I believe they are for a quest so I'm gonna hang on to those as well but the rest is just pretty much food. Those those can be taken up pretty easily. And then I did find a crate. Now, the crate's really not all that great. It does weigh quite a bit more than, than you'd probably want. And it doesn't really hold that many spaces to begin with. Uh, so, yeah, it's, its capacity is 8. It weighs 2 pounds. Uh, actually, it weighs less than a backpack. But the capacity size is medium rather than large. For those of you who don't know what capacity really uh, refers to, there's some weapons out there, and, and even, I, I don't know if there's armor, but I know there's other pieces out there besides weapons that are considered large, and unless you have a container that is considered large, you can't put that weapon in it, which means you'd have to have a completely open slot to put that down, which is why most people will tell you that if you're going to have backpacks on your character, uh, you know, at least, at the very least, have one spot that is not a backpack definitely want that because like J-Boots I think has to be out of a backpack to cast uh, or to get the effect. Um, there's a few other items out there like that so you definitely want at least one slot. I see most people have at least two. As a healer I've gotten into the habit of just one because there really wasn't a whole lot. Uh, in fact there's a lot of dead bodies out here. Can I loot any of this? Well I'll take it. <laughs> you know if somebody else wants to wants to just kill the creatures and not loot it yeah, he's just running around killing stuff. It looks like he's tweaked. He has a full set of armor on, and I'm, I'm running around completely naked for the most part. I'm glad they give you boots, because I would not want to see what this guy's feet look like running around on the snow after a few hours. Let's see, we're going to kill this white wolf. In fact, we're going to try some of these spiders. Now, I've pretty much been staying away from them, because they are pretty tough. They, they do quite a bit of damage, and I never seem to do very much damage to them. And on top of that, they have poison, so... Even if you do manage to beat the fight, there's a good chance you're going to die from it if you took a lot of damage during the fight. Uh, for me, maybe not so much because I can heal myself, but for other classes who can't do that, uh, you know, if, if you finish the fight and you're still taking damage, there's only two options really. You can sit down and hope that your regen while sitting is enough to, uh, to balance out the damage you're taking. Or you can try to bandage yourself if you have bandages. But again, if you're a low level, your bind wound is probably not that great. And you're probably not going to be able to keep up with it. But it's always worth a shot. I mean, it's not like you have anything to lose other than, you know, if you decide to sit down. You know, obviously you can't do both at the same time. So you have to decide. But I don't know. I think you're probably better off with bind wound uh, than sitting. But I. I don't rem remember if this is the way it used to be or if it's the way they add it later on. I do remember sometimes Bind Wound would fail and actually hurt you. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's the case anymore. It's been a long time. I actually never really played a class who ever needed to Bind Wound. My Shadow Knight could always heal himself on a bad guy, you know, by, by siphoning life. And then, of course, my Cleric just needed power to, to heal her, to heal himself or anybody else in the group. So, uh, let's go ahead. He's blue. We'll try it, see how well we do. We did a little bit of damage there. Well, we're doing damage to him. Wow, he was wiping the floor with us at the very beginning. Maybe I was just taking on creatures that were too high. You know, because these guys were all yellow to me. Which, you know, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what level they are. You know, when it gets to red, it's even harder. Anything I think past like four levels is going to be red to you. So, if it's four levels, you get a red... Con, but again, 
if it's uh, you know 15 levels you still get the same red con there's really no way to tell so if it's red usually you just want to stay away from it because it, it could be you know literally 20 or 30 levels higher than what you're at and you would not know uh, there's no variation in the red theme. It's not like it starts at like a pinkish color, and then as it gets to like 40 or 50 levels higher than you, it just looks like dripping blood or something like that. No, it's it's, it's not that in depth. Uh, I know later on, like with EverQuest 2, they started putting like the level right next to the target, and I've always felt that takes something away from it because you know having the unknown, not knowing what level. Ooh, what does this have? that do? A book is closed. Well, we'll loot that. I don't know what it's for, but we'll loot it. We'll check it out. Actually, let's, let's attack this guy. But there's really no reason why in games like this you would know everything about the enemy before you've even engaged it. I kind of wish they would do something like they did with like Final Fantasy where you could use your spells while you were fighting the enemy to discover things about the enemy. And it wasn't always all at once. You didn't just use the spell once and figure everything out about the enemy. No, you had to constantly use it over and over again. And it had this random factor where sometimes it would let you know something different. Oh, this guys he's hurting me quite a bit. I'm not really doing very much damage to him. There we go. Maybe I wasn't close enough to him. And <laughs> you can see I'm so much bigger. you think he would just use his foot and squish it. You know, but I guess he doesn't want to get all of that over what little tiny boots he has. Uh, you know, because he doesn't have any money to buy new ones. <laughs> he doesn't want to get guts and and all these, because it would be pretty messy stepping on this guy. I have to admit that. That would be, that'd be pretty nasty. And then you'd have to worry about him biting your foot. Yeah, I guess maybe hitting him with the club is probably better. Uh, although, you know, really, how hard up do you have to be to have a club as a weapon? Uh, you can't find something sharp. I mean, nothing. There's nothing around that's sharp. You can't even find, like, a pointy stick you can stab it with. You find something really heavy and dull to, to swing it and be like, hmm, this is a good choice. No, I, I don't understand that one, but I do know that they're trying to give you, like, the worst weapon in the, the game to start with so that you can improve upon it, you know? That, that makes sense. Uh, you know, in other games, I've actually seen it where you start with a full set of armor and you start with weapons and, and different ones in your backpacks. You start with backpacks. And I'm like, you know, how prepared... Holy crap, we might not make this whole... Oh, wow. Yeah! <laughs> we made it, okay. Nice, we got some food out of that. So let's go ahead and heal ourselves up a little bit. In fact... Uh, is that a big woolly mammoth coming our way? Wow, that guy's booking it. I was going to zoom out, but I want to see that woolly mammoth. Now, where'd he go? A mammoth cat. What's he con? Oh wow, he glares at me threateningly. I wonder why. I wouldn't think they would be that angry at me. I mean, I haven't done anything to them. I'm over here, with native of their lands. I guess I'm not really a druid. You know, if you're a druid and animals hate you, you're probably doing something pretty wrong. But still, just need someone to sell them to a merchant for me. Uh, he must be trying to do a quest that he's not good aligned with. Looking for someone to sell two bags of fine steel swords. 100 weight reduction will pay. Come to the guards by big area. Mm, you know what he's probably doing? Is he's probably killing the guards. Uh, you know, every time I go through the High Elf City and I see a Necro sending there, I always offer him my services. Uh, not, not to actually get paid any money or anything like that, but what is he selling? But yeah, I always offer them, uh, you know, if they want me to go over there and sell any of their items that they've been getting, because, you know, as a dark elf, I know the troubles of really not having anywhere you can sell to. It's one of those those races that, even if you have the backpacks, you never pick anything up because you just can't sell it to anybody other than like three towns in the entire game. Um, it, it's pretty horrible, and those towns are almost always completely and totally on the opposite side of where you're at. They're out of the way in the first place. They're, they're not zones that people really even go to uh, to get to those those uh, you know towns. It's, they're very um, just really put far, far off the beaten path 
And, you know, of course, that is exactly where, you know, in, in you know, sci-fi, you know, movies, or even, like, fantasy movies, the evil always, you know, springs up. is over, over when nobody's looking, you know, out in the darkness. And so it does make sense that's where they would put the towns, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but it does suck as a character who's, who's reliant on those NPCs to buy your stuff. For the good people... You know, they spread all across the land. I mean, they, you can find NPCs in zones that you would not expect to find, you know, another, another uh, you know, merchant to buy stuff from you. Like, it is a, a zone full of creatures that are all hostile to everybody. You'll find, like, one lone merchant off in a corner someplace uh, with a little caravan. But when it comes to evil people, they never seem to leave their swamps or their dark forest. You know, they stay in these, in these areas and they make you travel to them uh, and they don't come out looking for you so uh, that guy's even I don't know if we want to do another even that might be why we had so much trouble with that guy uh, I thought he was blue though now we have gotten better at our channeling which is pretty cool you know every time you use your spells you get a little bit better at it uh, there's a wolf over here now these guys usually drop a, a pelt and the pelts are quite a bit of money at this level they're about one gold uh, sometimes a gold and a half depending on the quality of the pelt and these guys really aren't that hard. They're, they're blue to me at level 3. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty good e experience, too. In fact, let me put my experience up so you guys can see that. Drag it off over here to the side. And, yeah, we're going to beat this fight. Let me... No, oh, he's running away. Let me change this down. No, he's, he's getting away. Now, if he gets away far enough, he's actually hooked to you as a... Almost like if you have a line on this guy, he can only go so far away from uh, from you. Now, if you're in a group, it could be any one of you in the group. You know, or it's actually all of you. So if you go chasing the mob, is what I'm saying, he will continue to run further and further. I don't know why it stopped attacking. Oh, because it crouched this way. But he will continue to go further and further away, down whatever paling uh, that he wants to. This guy seems to turn around and come back around, but... I just can't hit this guy from behind. There he goes. So usually your best bet is if you're in a dungeon and the, the mob runs away because you guys forgot to snare him or root him. Uh, anyone happen to see a sexy corpse with the my name on it? Uh, I seem to have misplaced it on the tundra somewhere. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye out for it. But yeah, usually if that happens, uh, everybody will just sit down and wait for it to come back because it won't go that far. We'll just go down the hallway uh, and then it will eventually refill its life to a certain point and then come back and attack the group. Whereas if you ran after it, oh my god, you could you could be chasing after that thing all the way down to the beginning of the zone and causing such a train on yourself, it's, it's not even funny. So usually people will just take the small train. The creature walks down a corridor he's not supposed to and he pulls an extra four guys. Well, he continues to walk, and eventually he'll get to the, the end of his limit and stop there, or pay back and forth a little bit. And you guys will have already gotten those three or four roamers that he passed by, and hopefully you're able to kill those off before he comes back, or even able to handle those. But you should be able to if you have a, a decent group and you're ready for it. Uh, but, you know, bad things happen. Want to buy Black Burrow? No, no skin, not pelts. Uh, I think I have the pelts. Oh, no, I got the scalps. Uh, but he's not buying scalp. He wants skins. Hmm, I don't know what the difference is. I know Blackborough is close by, and it's supposed to be really, really good experience. And I do want to check it out, so I should look up on the map and see how to get there. It might be somewhere interesting to go to. Although, from the videos I've watched, uh, <laughs> and I've been watching a lot of uh, EverQuest old school videos from other players who have been doing their own for for some time, like Super Bits and Bobs is a, an amazing, uh, you know, Let's Player, and I, he's very, it's, it's, what, what is hitting me here? Oh, I got a second one, let's see if we can do this, if not, we'll run it, but I don't think we're gonna, we might be able, to, let me turn it so he's at least not hitting me from behind, uh, can we do it, can we do it, oh, uh, we're gonna do, no, we're not gonna do it, let's, should we, now we're gonna run it, I was gonna say, look, should we at least kill one, come on, let me get out of here. I just need to get back to the guards. Now we are at probably about 30% of our bubble, or our level. So if we do die, we'll, we'll try to see how much experience you lose. Now one thing you want to make sure to do is 
if you do the side scroll like this where you're holding down the key it's a lot harder for them to hit you now I never did this back in old school original I, I kind of thought it as a cheat because I don't think the game programs initially intended for you to do it this way you know kind of kind of get by their <laughs> their uh, their 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 check or whatever for you to die if you're gonna run away. Come on, kill it! There we go. Get the guards. Get it off of me. But it does save your your life. And considering how hard it is to get your course back, sometimes if you got to do it, you know, if it's a little cheat here and there, and it's not against the rules. Everybody does it apparently. But you know, if if you got to do it to save yourself then do it. And all you gotta do is basically hold down the second mouse button and then hit the arrow keys. There's other ways you can do it. You can even program it uh, in your keys to, to do that slide as you move forward. But yeah, it makes it really, really hard for them to hit you. I, I think it's almost impossible for them to hit you. So let's sell some of these pelts. Oh, only nine copper for that one? Well, we don't really need it, so we'll sell it for now. Let's see, do we have anything else for sale? No, nothing there. Oh, we got some stuff here. We got a goblin ice necklace. What does that do exactly? Nothing actually. It doesn't do anything. So we'll sell that for two copper. Wow, we're rolling into the dough on that one. What about this spiderling legs? Okay, we'll sell those. And they do stack on top of each other. Spider legs are nine copper. And I can't sell that and don't want to sell those. That's pretty much all we have here. Wow, some of those things aren't worth very much money at all. Got another player here. So we haven't seen that person's course. I'm hoping we run into it because I, I do like helping people out. But as I was saying with Super Bits and Bobs, he has an amazing uh, Let's Play. If you guys haven't seen his yet, I definitely suggest you go check it out. Though if you're watching mine, you probably have already seen his because he's been out for a lot longer than I have. And he's very relaxing. He's very uh, laid back. And he has one of those voices that just make it very easy to listen to him. So I've been watching a lot of his, I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, Dylan75 videos as well. But yeah, it's nice to get a different perspective from the one that I have because I'm so geared towards grouping in my mind because that's just what I got into towards the, the end of my game. As I, as I said before, I started out on a Shadow Knight and I pretty much soloed that guy all the way up to uh, probably about level 35, 40, and that's when I was starting to get into groups. That's when people actually were accepting Shadow Knights. Because, first of all, Shadow Knight has that experience debt, almost like the, the Paladin has one. You know, he, he's an experience penalty, actually, is what it's called. And uh, you just have to earn more experience to level than anybody else. That does happen to mean that you lose a little bit less experience, or it looks like a little bit less experience, I should say, when you die. Now, you have to earn so much more, which is why they're giving you that break. That's why you lose so little. But, yeah, that gets passed on to the group because they're part of that now. It's penalizing you, but it can't just solely penalize you. It, it's, it's not that sophisticated, so it's just penalizing everybody. And so some groups do not want Shadow Knights in their, in their group at all. And it was hard to find groups when they had other options. You know, if they could... This decaying guy. Okay, I can kill that guy. When they had options for like a warrior or, you know, pretty much any other class besides uh, a paladin or a shadow knight, uh, they'd go with it. So when it came down to it, I was like the last choice. You know? And, and it sucked because you had to wait forever. And this is back in the day when the game was completely, uh, you know, over camp because there was just tons and tons of people on. Some of you guys watching may not know what that even means because you come up from the new school of MMOs where everybody gets in a complete and total new instant every time they log into a, a new zone and it's it's so easy to have a zone all to yourself or to your guild or to your group uh, it's not even funny and in this one you all share everything everything is communal you come to a zone it's the zone for the whole server you you can't you know take anything for yourself really i mean yeah you can have a camp but that's usually just the the creatures you can see within your your eyesight you know that you can claim for yourself but yeah it's it's not like it was back in the day where for new games anyways where you can just you know have everything to yourself and i kind of like the fact that you can you know it makes you share it makes you learn that 
and interact with other players because some players are, are bunholes <laughs> and you're gonna see it and at the time it's not funny you know it's gonna make you angry that they come in and do all the, the you know the stupid stuff they do and if you see them picking on a newbie you know you get on their case and you take you know you start defending them and stuff and yeah it's it's kind of cool because it's like real life you know you have to share and there's always those people out there who you know either didn't have another sibling and they never learned to share or maybe they had too many siblings and they hate sharing now right and <laughs> so whatever the case is uh, it definitely introduces you to all sorts of personalities whereas like the new ones like I, I hate to keep comparing it to EverQuest 2 but it, you know it's in the same genre it's the, it's the continuation basically of this game so that's why I do it as much as I do but in that one you know there you could probably play that one now when it first came out it was a lot more like um, this one than it was uh, like it is now you know we're just so easy but nowadays you could probably play that entire game and never see another soul the entire time if you want it you know it's it's that easy to create instances it's that easy to go to the zones that just won't have anybody in them and plus you know that game's been out for a long time and there's other games out as well I don't think it has the following that this one has to be honest I don't know if it's gonna have the longevity that this one has I know there's people out there who love it and I'm not putting it down because I enjoy it quite a bit myself but I don't know it just seems like I have a feeling to come back to this one you know I'm drawn drawn to this one uh, when I don't play it and you know it's in the back of my mind I'll think about it every every once in a while and be like you know what I remember that zone. You know, out of the blue, you know, something will remind you of, of EverQuest. I've never gotten that feeling for EverQuest. I've never gotten it for any other game. You know, not EverQuest 2, not anything. Um, so I don't know if it will have that longevity. Maybe it's just when you play it in your life. You know, if what was the MMO that you first got started on? Was it this one? Was it a different one? Do you have that feeling for other ones? Uh, and I'm, I'm asking the viewers who are watching right now. I would love to hear your opinion because. People who play this game are a little biased towards it, obviously. Just like for any game that they, any person plays, you know, you're going to be biased and and say you enjoy that one more than others. Otherwise, why would you be playing it, you know? But I'm kind of interested to find out from other people. Uh, do they have the same same feeling for their games? You know, like if you started out on WoW, uh, hopefully that's not a vengeful soulist. It is, and I'm dead. Oh, man. That sucked. <laughs> I'm not going to make this one. Let's see, can I do the side scroll? Maybe. Oh, this is such a cheat. This is such a cheat. I don't like this. No, this is wrong. This is so wrong. You know, I'm still doing it. <laughs> this is not right. I should be dead by now. There is no way I should still be alive with this guy on my butt. He will be outrunning me every single time. He's, he's, he's a skeleton. They're really fast for some reason. And I'm hurt. Yeah, this is not... Oh, man. I'm torn because I like it, but I don't. I don't like the old school feel. It doesn't have the... Oh, okay. Right there. I could have killed myself. That should have killed me. Running into that thing definitely should have killed me. He's right on my butt, too. I can hear him. Let's see. Are those guys going to get it? If I stop, I'm going to die. Holy crap. See, I stopped scrolling there, and he caught up with me. Zone it. I'm in the zone. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know your opinion on that side scrolling stuff. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to use it at a high level. No, it's it's too big of a cheat. If I can't pull, if I can't get away from a creature the way it was meant to be done, I, I don't think I'll use that. Uh, at a low level, it's kind of funny to do it, but mm, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know on that one. You know, I kind of understand why some raid people do it, you know, because it makes things so much easier. And you're probably not going to be allowed into a, a tier, you know, whatever guild, unless you're willing to do that as the pool. But I don't know. I think it's I think it's too big of a an advantage. That just seemed like... I could have run across the entire zone with those guys on me, and they never would have caught up. And that's not what it was meant to be. Unless you had So on, or Sal, you're, you're not supposed to be able to to run that fast and I don't know it just makes all those items like the J boots and paying druids for so 
uh, or sow, however you want to say that word. I know it drives people crazy, uh, the different pr pronunciations of that, and, and several other words like uh, felicious or uh, velius, but yeah, I don't know. I, it it kind of makes those other other things worthless if everybody can run the the speed of so, you know, without having it. You know, that that's not right. And see, I'm doing it right there. You can see how fast it is. And when I stop, it slows down. I speed up. You know, that's fast. Now stop. You know, it, I don't I don't I don't think I'm gonna do that again. It's funny to play with it, but yeah, I don't think that's fair. And yeah, I, I kind of wish maybe they would take that out. I know. There's some people out there who are very passionate about using that, so they will probably hate me for even mentioning they should remove that from the game, but... Yeah, even though it was in the original, and it was probably overlooked for some time, and maybe the programmers knew about it, maybe they wanted that. It just doesn't seem to me like they would. It doesn't seem like uh, that would be something they planned, anyways. Maybe it's something they, they didn't plan, it happened, and then they were okay with it after the fact, but... I don't think any programmer goes into it saying, you know, let's let's make them run faster going sideways. Like, that's even a thing, because everything else in this game is is super realistic to the point where you have to have food and you have to water. And, uh, you know, there's a daytime and a nighttime. And there's certain creatures out there who hate you, or you have other creatures out there who you have good faction with. I mean, it's, it's as realistic as you can get in a fantasy world. And then you have it where they run faster sideways. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they have powers, they have magic and stuff, but still, you can't just throw all reason out. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, at least do something stupid and give them skates or something like that instead of just be like, oh, we'll make them run faster sideways. Uh, let's see, can we kill this guy before the goblin comes back? Although I think the goblin probably was easier to kill. You're dead, punk. Uh, I didn't mean to loot you right away, but <laughs> we'll come back to you and get whatever you have. We'll try to kill this diaper, this diaper ghoul, or goblin. Oh yeah, see, now I could loot that, but then I'd be sniffing his butt crack. So I'm going to move over to the side, because <laughs> I don't go that way. Uh, there we go. And these guys are pretty dirty creatures, even though they're, they're over here in a nice clean area. So I'm pretty sure I don't want to get too close to them with my nose. Uh, what do we got here? low quality bear skin. I think those are worth a little bit of money. Not too much though. Let's see, how much experience do we have? Two bubbles already. That's not bad. For a low level zone where you're killing singles, that's pretty good. Now, if you had a group over here, yeah, you'd be leveling a lot faster, but... Oh, I forgot these guys are, are aggro with each other. Well, we should be able to take two. Granted, one of them's not even, which it doesn't seem like he is, because if he was, we'd be taking a lot more damage. Now, if you ever find yourself not doing a lot of damage to the creature, it could be that you're not close enough to them. Sometimes, for whatever reason, you just have to be like almost right on top of the creature to be doing damage. Nice. It automatically switch targets for me. I like that. Die, punk. These guys are pretty cool looking. In fact, let me take off the boxes since it looks like we're going to do fine here. I'll go ahead and kill this guy like this. I could see making like a short movie. And narrating it over. Oh no, we got another one. Kill him. Are we gonna be able to get out of this? Uh, I think we are. Skeleton should be easy. Let me let me pull this back before we get another spider. <laughs> I don't want to go with four spiders in a row. That's that's pretty rough. There we go. We killed that guy. Uh, wow, I didn't mean to loot him, but okay. Looks like I got that on uh, on greed or something. Like one of those ninja looters in the group that I see all the time. And for those of you who watch me on my cleric, you'll know that I almost never loot. It's it's one of those things that, as a cleric, I'm usually busy talking and tells. I'm usually busy healing people or just watching their lives. Uh, lately, though, it's just because I'm doing narration for the, the videos. So I just get overly, you know, busy with what I'm thinking about and what I'm talking about. Before, before long, I realize that I've been in the group for an hour. I haven't taken a break in the video uh, from the very beginning. And my friend Kevin was actually telling me, like, he loves loves the, uh, the, the long EverQuest videos. But when I do my Craft the World ones, he was letting me know, he's like, yeah, an hour and a half is a little long for a video on those. And I, I do understand that. I'm not one of those people who really have uh, structure to these videos as far as I don't sit down with a timer. 
you know, and start it when I when I start the video and be like, okay, I'm giving myself 20 minutes and we're starting, we're stopping there. We're giving myself 10 minutes and we're stopping there. Uh, I don't do anything like that. Really, I just start the video uh, and start having fun with it. You know, just figure something to do. I don't ever have any plans on what I'm going to do that day. I just start something. And then I start narrating over it and start talking about, you know, my day or talking about uh, the game. And uh, before long, uh, if it's a good video, it you know, an hour goes by pretty quick for me. And I didn't even realize that it had taken that long, so... That's kind of why I do videos that are everywhere in between, usually at least 30 minutes. I don't think I've, I've done a video that was shorter than 30 minutes in some time, but... Yeah, I'm one of those people who just never shut up, apparently. <laughs> I just keep talking, so... Yeah, it definitely works out for me for a job like this. Granted, uh, you know, in real life, I'm actually one of the quiet ones. The ones that you really can't ever get to, to say anything, so... It's kind of a, uh, a contradiction, but we'll have to, uh, let's see, can we kill, the, yeah, we can kill this guy. These guys seem to be pretty low. If you go around the corner, there's actually some spiders that seem to be all even to me at level 3, so they're a little tough. I We almost died from that one we took. I don't think I want to go over there just yet, but it would be better experience. So if you have a little bit better armor than I do, uh, it's definitely something you should check out. Now, we did get a sword that I didn't have time to look at, so I do want to check that out as well. Uh, it's not in there. There it is. So let's see. Rusty Two-Hander. Nine damage, 50 delay. Wow, that's even worse delay than the last weapon we found. Uh, and the weight is 12 pounds. Man, that is one heavy freaking sword. You know, my brother bought... Because uh, we go to the Renaissance every year. Uh, although he lives in California now, so he doesn't get to go that often, but... I still go to the Renaissance Festival every year here in Houston. It's one of the biggest ones in the state, uh, from what I'm told. I haven't actually been to any of the other ones, so I can't tell for sure. But it's pretty big, and they add on to it, it seems, every year. You know, there's an extra little bit here, an extra little bit there. and uh, You know, he bought one of the swords one year. That was uh, the one from Braveheart. You know, that really, really long one that he throws in that famous scene down into the middle of the, the, uh, the field or whatever. It's... It's enormous, right? It's made to be carried uh, basically different than any other sword because it, it's one of those ones that just swipes for once, you know, and it, it's like eight feet long or whatever. It's ridiculous. That's what that sword reminds me of. That one is like 12 pounds, but it's not really a sword. It's more like a, a long piece of steel with spiky bits on the end of it, and it's just a sword to me should be able to be swung with one hand. Uh, otherwise, it's it's just massive, you know. It's just too massive for me as a, as a weapon of choice for any anything else other than looks. It look cool. I give them that. You put that on your back and you get the whole outfit going on. And, you know, we would always go something different every year. Like, you know, I'd do the suit of armor. We go as a... I gotta go as a gesture. Or uh, I've been a nobleman as well, you know, all dressed up in garb and stuff, but... It really depends on the weather, you know. Anybody who's ever been to Houston knows that it can get really, really hot. So, depending on when you go, if you go like Halloween weekend, that's pretty cool. Because uh, everybody dresses up. You don't have to actually be like Renaissance style costume. Uh, it's whatever costume you're dressing up for Halloween uh, is acceptable that weekend. And so you'll get a lot more people dressed up. And it's kind of cool because a lot of it... Polar bear skin, that's kind of nice. A lot of it that people actually wear as their costumes for Halloween actually look pretty cool uh, at the Renaissance Festival. I, I've noticed that pirates is a big thing nowadays, so you see a lot of pirates walking around. It kind of fits. I mean, it's not really the, the same thing, but it kind of fits. Uh, you see, <laughs> last year I saw something that cracked me up. It was a little kid walking around, right? Uh, and he had little overalls on. Uh, <laughs> The part that was the funniest, though, was he had a big square block from Minecraft as his head. He was the little Minecraft guy. And it, it just cracked me up. And every every time he, he'd start moving, there'd be somebody else who stopped and be, you know, complimenting him on his costume and wanting to take a picture with him. And I was like, you know, that is a great experience for a kid. You know, he gets a costume that he's passionate about because he plays Minecraft. Then he leaves comes out into, you know, the Renaissance where everybody else is dressed up as well and having a good time, and it's always a great atmosphere. I've never been to the Renaissance Festival and ever found anybody who was 
Uh, of course, if you stay really late, you're going to find drunk people. But other than that, you're not going to find anybody who's ever mean or, you know, inconsiderate towards people. And here's this kid, you know, being complimented and taking pictures with everybody. That has to be a very memorable experience for him. And hopefully that will make him passionate about the Renaissance Festival uh, for the rest of his life. Or at least, you know, being passionate about what he's passionate about, which is, you know, obviously video games uh, in, his, in his situation. My uh, nephew is uh, is very passionate about um animal crossing and he would play that he still does actually because he's you know still young but he plays that hours and hours every day after he done you know gets done doing his homework and one day uh you know him and his uh, or my brother his father uh were walking around the mall and they were walking past a shop and they saw uh the hat that his little meme uh, was wearing, you know, and he's he just had to have it, and so they stopped and they got it. And for those of you who are wondering what kind of hat it is, it's one of those those hats that look like a couch, you know. It has that striped design on it that that looks like it's like from the old like '60s couches, you know. It's kind of weird, you know, lines going everywhere and stuff. And it's it's one of those. Uh, it goes a rim all the way. I don't know what the name of the hat is, but. Uh, I'll definitely have to take a picture and put it up on my my uh, my Twitter account, but so you guys can see it. But yeah, it, it's funny though because he was because he's so big into the game. When he saw that hat, he just had to have it, and uh, yeah. So they got it for him, and he wears it everywhere. And that just goes to show you how big of an influence and how how much imagination kids have. And I think that's why games have the influence they have on on them at the age that they are because it, it does allow them to explore their imagination where you know schools really don't do that yeah you have music class and you have art but there's nothing else as far as like putting yourself into another world the books can do it but they're they're not really for the new generation that's not the the medium that the new generation is the most familiar with their music is that probably the number one uh, for expressing yourself I my niece walks around with a headset on everywhere she goes you can't talk to her you know and she's only like 14 15 I think she just had her birthday uh, was it like three months ago or something like that but yeah she walks around with those everywhere and so that I would say music would probably be their number one but you know you got TV you know it's hard to compete with TV when it comes to books and you know take that from somebody who actually writes books uh, you know, and puts them out there in the store for people to buy, uh, hoping that they will bypass TV and actually read a book for for a little while. It's it's definitely difficult now. It is becoming a little bit more commonplace because you know all these little iPads and and tablets that are coming out. Oh, that guy's even. I'm not doing that one. <laughs> but yeah, with all these little tablets and you can read books on those, they are definitely becoming a little bit more uh, acceptable to some people, but. Yeah, if you if you give a kid a choice between reading the book or watching the movie, uh, they will almost always pick the movie. And like I said, I can't really blame people for being lazy because it's in our nature. It's it's one of those things that has evolved over time so that we will save the energy we have until we need it later on. But it does definitely stop us from doing things that we probably ultimately would enjoy if we weren't so lazy, you know, right? And some of us are more lazy than others, but... And I'm not saying just because you don't read, you're lazy. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's a lot easier to watch a movie than it is to read a book. Because reading a book requires... Oh, how does this guy keep dying? Like, there's always a dead decaying skeleton over here. And there's an, always another one over here. Something must be killing these guys and leaving the corpses. Which is... I, that can't be the case, because if something kills them, there would be a corpse. So maybe somebody keeps running by every so often and killing one that I just never see, and they never loot it? That, that's even weirder. Um, I don't want to kill that guy. That guy was rough last time. Let's come down here. Uh, is there a body down here? Yes, there is. An ice goblin whelp. But he killed somebody. Dude, where's my car corpse? <laughs> that dude watched way too many movies. Oh, my God. Oh, so can we kill this guy? Yes, we can. Nice. We're going to go ahead and try. He's... Well, we've been killing these... Oh, there's two of them. What level is this guy? Oh, he's even. Let me kill the whelp. And let's try killing the scout. I don't know if we can do it, but we're going to try. He's even, and we've already taken a little bit of damage, so... 
Oh, we hit him there. Yeah, we hit him for three points. Come on. There we go. Okay. We're doing a little bit of damage. If we can keep that up. And you can see his face. Now, some people don't like these goblins because they're blue. They want that traditional green feel to their goblins. They kind of are green if you look at them. But they're in an ice zone. So they've been kind of like frozen a little bit. And I think that's the, the blending, blending of the two colors. You see like the green underneath but the, the coldness of the zone really, you know, paling them out a little bit. Because again, you're not going to get a whole lot of sunlight if you're constantly like hiding away to keep warm. Or covering up completely on your body. Ooh, there we go. Okay, we did a decent amount of damage there. We need a, a few more six. There we go, five points right there. We're just not hitting them every turn. And that's that's ultimately what's stopping us from killing this guy. Come on. Where'd he go? Oh, he went right through the building. Uh, now, when chasing these guys, sometimes if you're having a hard time hitting them, you want to make sure that you're actually in front of them. That way, when it comes time for you to hit or swing, uh, they're passing you by rather than you chasing after them. I can't see the target. As long as your guy keeps saying that he's actually trying to hit the, the creature, then you're close enough. I just, I can't ever hit this guy that much. There we go. Now, my faction standing with Nagafin and Vox got worse. For those of you who are not familiar who, with who those people are, those are dragons. Nagafin is over in Solus B, and Vox, I believe, is over here in, uh, I can't think of the name right now, what the, the name of that zone is. Oh, I'm out of space? Seriously? Um, hmm. Let's see. What do I have? Well, this bracelet is worthless. I know that. A goblin ice necklace. Actually, it's not the same one as I had before. Which was this one. Yeah, cloth choker. So we're going to put that down. Let's look at this. Uh, it doesn't do anything, but it might be worth something. And a rusty rapier. So we're going to take that with us. And this is a little trick if you're full up and you want to get something back. You go over to where the NPCs are that you're going to sell in that zone. Drop it on the ground. Then talk to the NPC sell and pick it back up. Now, yeah, of course somebody could run by and pick it up. But, you know, what was your other option? Just leave it there and let it go to waste anyways. So, at least this way somebody gets it. And chances are it's going to be you if you're just a little careful. You move yourself away from it where everybody's at. Uh, or pick an NPC that nobody's standing around in a building someplace off uh, in in a small you know secluded spot you know there's there's tons of those type of NPCs are out there and that's another thing I want to uh, talk about in this game is I kind of love the hidden little spots out in the middle of nowhere uh, with a building just sitting there you know if you meet somebody on this game a friend whether it's you know male or female whether you're dating or not whether you're just friends it doesn't matter because eventually in between fights, you're going to want to take a break and, and just chill out. You know, one of them is going to go get a drink, uh, come back, whatever. Something's happening where you guys can't hunt at the moment. You're waiting for a group spot to open up. And you can chill inside this little building. And it's so much better than, than sitting behind of a group and, you know, seeing that you can't kill the creatures they are. And Sometimes sitting behind a group is not a safe place to be. And you'll get attacked. It's, it, it just causes you to have to worry about yourself rather than just sitting there waiting. And sometimes that's all you want to do. You just want to sit there and wait while you have the TV on or the music on. Uh, and so having these little small areas that you can kind of get out of the way and chill and relax uh, is very, very cool. But again, it was mainly there for because this whole zone is shared. So they wanted to make sure that even when the zone was completely camped, there was plenty of spaces to it for people to be able to come over here and chill or, or sell over here in a corner and and have this nice little spot right here next to the zone. So... You know, people can, can uh, you know, sell their wares and stuff, but the zones are a lot bigger, too, than other games, mainly for the same reason, because they knew that they had to be a lot of people, or at any given time, everybody in the game could decide to come over here to the zone. Now, chances are it would crash the server, but if you had a server capable of, uh, you know, dealing with that, then, yeah, you could you could do that, and that's pretty cool that the, the, the zone is big enough for that. Not a lot of games do that anymore. Not a lot of games... Or big enough for me. It's very small zones with super long loading times, and it just seems like we're kind of taking a step backwards as far as like the loading times go. Whatever happened to no loading? 
<laughs> yeah, that used to be a big selling point in games is, you know, when they got away from like Sega CD and stuff and you didn't have to load anymore. No more waiting for a zone or it loaded so quickly it wasn't a big deal anymore. And now it just seems like I was playing one game a while back and I can't remember what the name of it was, but I think I took like 10 steps and boom, I hit another zone. And the zone took me like five minutes to get through. And then I went through that zone and literally I took another wrong turn, I guess, and I hit another zone. I'm like, how many friggin' zones do they have in this game? Why are they so close? If, you, if they are within eyesight of each other, that should be one zone. You know, there's no reason to break it up into that small, except for the fact that maybe it's easier for them to do. Maybe it's easier for their their servers to handle when it's that small. I almost forgot that weapon. And as you can see, it actually does look like the weapon I dropped on the ground. Again, if you ever see this weapon on an NPC, uh, it will be on their corpse. Whatever they're wearing, as far as weapons go, will be on the corpse of the NPC. This is uh, four silver. Now, I want to show you guys something. Uh, if this is the same way as it was back in the day, you could come over here and give the NPC a weapon. Oh, it doesn't do it. Dang it, maybe it only does it with armor. But you could give them armor and the NPCs would actually change their outfit to the, the armor pieces you're giving them. If the pieces you're giving them have the illusion of, uh, you know, some kind of effect on it. And you'll see that a lot in, like, test servers. If you ever go to the test servers, uh, you get a copy of your character on that test server. Now, everything you do on that test server doesn't matter. Uh, it's not going to affect your original game. And you're not going to get to keep it anyway. So, if you give all your armor to an NPC, you can quite literally see the different races wearing the pieces you're wearing and it's, it's funny because they will override each other when you get a piece that's better than the one that they are already wearing so <laughs> you may start by giving them everything you have and somebody else comes along and gives them everything they have and two or three pieces change you know and before long these these guys look uber you know they're like the tip of the top you you're seeing like npcs standing there in raid gear yeah <laughs> that's how funny it is it's actually pretty cool i have to I'd have to go on the test server sometime and, and show you guys what that looks like. But I think actually we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys, because it is getting a little bit long. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for watching. If you do enjoy these episodes, as always, uh, please you know take a few minutes and hit the like button, subscribe, or even just leave a comment down below. It definitely helps grow my channel, and I greatly appreciate it. As far as leaving comments down below, uh, that's mainly for me because I enjoy hearing back from you guys and what you enjoy seeing and what you don't where you want to see me go in the future, or even uh, just commenting on any of the, the topics that I talk about in my videos. So again, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.